Hello, friends, uh, colleagues, and postgraduate students. And welcome to the seventh and final seminar in our series for 2023. This is the Humanities Religious Studies Research Collective. My name is Milad Milani, and today's speaker is our dear colleague, Associate Professor Diego Bubio. Before we begin, as always, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea, and community. I am on the Darug land, and I pay my respects to their elders past, present, and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples present today. My distinguished guest, uh, Paolo Diego Bubio, is Associate Professor of Theoretical Philosophy at the University of Turin in Italy and Adjunct, professor, adjunct Associate Professor of Philosophy at Western Sydney University. His research focuses in particular on the relation of post-Kantian philosophy to the later movements of European philosophy. His books include Sacrifice in the Post-Kantian Tradition, Perspectivism, Intersubjectivity and Recognition. Uh, also God and the Self in Hegel, Beyond Subjectivism, uh, also with Sunni Press, and Intellectual Sacrifice and Other Mimetic Paradoxes, with Michigan State University Press. I'm honored to host Diego today, not only because he is a distinguished scholar in his field, but also because it is with Diego's support and help that the Religious Studies Collective was first founded. I'm grateful to Diego's continued collegiality, even from afar in beautiful Italy. Today, Diego will be talking to us about secularization, emancipation, and kenosis in the thought of Gianni Vatimo. And many of you will know that Gianni Vatimo, uh, born 1936 um, and died in 2023 this year, was an Italian philosopher and politician, passed away in September, leaving behind a celebrated intellectual legacy. And Bubio, of course, had the uh, honor of preserving an interview with Vatimo, which has been translated into English and published in the form of a conversation with the Journal of Continental Philosophy. Today, Diego will be talking uh, specifically about two strictly intertwined notions that from the mid 80s onwards have become more and more central in Gianni Vatima's thought. This is particularly the notions of secularization and kenosis. The importance that these themes have acquired in Vatima's most recent production is such that it is argued by Bubio, it amounts to an actual kehre or turn. However, as is the case with Heidegger, with Vatimo too, the Kehre is not a radical discontinuity, but rather a shift of research and reflection towards themes that, although already present in Vatimo's philosophy, have assumed more specifically religious nuances, and then they have progressively developed up uh, to the point where they have formed an organic perspective. Diego follows this development, starting from the notion of secularization to then grasp its interweaving with the themes of emancipation and violence of metaphysics. This is, I believe, because it ties in with one of Vatima's central ideas of weak thought. Diego will then reflect on the centrality of the notion of kenosis and its meaning in Vatima's thought. Now, I have been very much looking forward to this talk. Diego, welcome to our seminar series. And thank you for making the time to speak to us today, uh, which is your evening over there in Italy. So, buonasera and buonvenuto. Thank you, uh, Milad. It's very good to, uh, to be here. Thank you for uh, inviting me. And thanks, everybody, for listening to this talk. Uh, let me start with a, uh, with a biographical note. Milad was mentioning... Uh, the role that Gianni Vattimo uh, had uh, in uh, Italian philosophy and academia. And uh, it was indeed uh, a very uh, impactful role. And uh, I had the privilege of being one of his uh, uh, students since the time when I was an undergraduate, at the, an undergraduate student at the University of Turin. And then during my postgraduate, uh, years as well, and uh, mm, but it was uh, only in the last ten years uh, when uh, 
uh, Vattimo. Actually, it all started with Gianni Vattimo's visit to Australia in uh, 2013, uh, when uh, the philosophy group at Western Sydney University uh, hosted the annual conference of the Australasian Society for Continental Philosophy in, in that year. And we decided to invite Vattimo as a keynote speaker, and Vattimo came. And uh, from that moment on, uh, uh, Gianni Vattimo and I developed a kind of uh, ongoing intellectual conversation, um, uh, which was very important to me, and I, uh, it is very dear to me. So uh, it was very sad for me personally when uh, Gianni passed away uh, last September. But as Milad was mentioning, Gianni left us with an important philosophical legacy. And uh, today I'm trying to share with you why I think that the, some of the notions uh, on which Vattimo focused his last philosophical efforts are worth reflecting on. So uh, before I start, let me just say a few words about uh, Gianni Vattimo as a philosopher. Uh, you might have heard the name, uh, but uh, it's important to locate him philosophically in, in uh, the philosophical landscape. Now, Gianni Vattimo was uh, himself a student of an Italian seminal philosopher whose name is Luigi Parison. Uh, that name might not uh, say much to an Anglophone reader because only very few works of Luigi Parison are translated into English. Uh, truth and interpretation is one of them. But uh, it is probably, uh, it, it probably makes more sense if I mention the fact that, if, if I mention the name of another uh, important student of Luigi Parison, Umberto Eco. Um, Luigi Parison was effectively one of the three great fathers of the school of contemporary philosophical hermeneutics, together with Paul Ricoeur and Hans Georg Gadamer. Uh, Vattimo, a student of Luigi Parison, was famous, is famous for a philosophical approach. Milad mentioned it uh, earlier on. Pensiero debole in Italian, which is, which is usually translated into English as weak thought. What is weak thought? Weak thought is basically concerned with arguing for philosophical anti fundationalism. It draws on the philosophy of Nietzsche, Heidegger, Gadamer, and on these grounds, Vattimo advocates the rejection of metaphysics and a reinterpretation of truth as the opening of horizon. Uh, Vattimo's thought has its roots in Nietzsche and Heidegger. From Nietzsche, Vattimo borrows and endorses the famous or perhaps infamous claim that there are no facts, only interpretations. That is to say that nobody can legitimately claim to hold an unquestionable, unquestionable truth. From Heidegger, Vattimo takes the idea that being cannot be identified with objective presence. And he builds on this to develop the idea of a post-metaphysical philosophy, a philosophy able to think the event of being in terms, and I'm quoting from Vattimo here, in terms of an indefinite type of ongoing subtraction, a weakening, a taking leave, or long farewell. Finally, from Gadamer, Vattimo retrieves the belief that being which can be understood is language. In interpreting Gadamer's assertion, Vattimo distinguishes his position from radical relativism on one end and from the still metaphysical temptation to affirm that beyond linguistic comprehension, there could exist a being in itself on the other. It tries to find a middle ground between these two extremes. Uh, as Milad 
And now in this talk, I intend to focus on two closely interconnected concepts that have become increasingly central in Bakimov's thought since the mid 1980s. The notions of secularization and the notion of kenosis. When I say that these notions have become increasingly central to the point of producing an actual care in German, a turning point in his thought, I'm not pointing to a radical discontinuity, but rather to a shift in research and reflection towards themes that were already present in Bakimov's philosophy, but that have assumed more distinctively religious dimension and have gradually evolved into a coherent perspective. So my aim is to follow this development, beginning with the concept of secularization, then exploring its interconnection with the themes of emancipation and the violence of metaphysics, and ultimately underscoring the central role of kenosis in Bakimov's thought. First of all, what is kenosis? Uh, the text from which we get culturally the term kenosis uh, is one of samples letters in uh, the Christian New Testament, specifically Philippians 2.7. In Philippians 2.7, it is said that Christ emptied himself, the Greek verb is ekenosen, from which kenosis. So Christ, it is said, emptied himself, taking the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. This is the verse in St. Paul's letter. What does it mean? It means, or so most theologians think, that Christ's act of self-divestment, of renouncing his own divinity, is simultaneously the act of the incarnation. That is the divine externalization in human form. Uh, it was important to clarify what we may mean by kenosis uh, uh, before approaching the theme of secularization, because I guess that as we approach Bakimov's reading of secularization, if you keep in mind this concept of kenosis, uh, uh, the link will become more evident. So secularization. Bakimov sees secularization as the consummation of the sacred and thus as a legitimizing aspect of his weak ontology. In his book, The End of Modernity, which is a book written in 1988, by the way, all Bakimov's books are translated into English, um, and so, so that they, they are easily, uh, um, they can easily be find and, uh, found and read. In the end of modernity, Bakimov's conception of secularization is grounded on um, the theory of Arnold Galen, a social theorist uh, who is, was the author of an important book called The Secularization of Progress. Bakimov's main theory in this book, or better, Bakimov's main theories in this book are uh, three fundamental, can be, uh, expressed in three fundamental points. The first, that modernity is the era of the abandonment of the sacred vision of existence, that is secularization. The second is that the key point of, of secularization is faith in progress. And third, that this secularization of the providential vision of history affirms the new as the fundamental value. Now, the point, however, that Bakimo wants to stress in this book is that, and I quote from Bakimo himself, by, by depriving progress of a final destination, secularization dissolves the very notion of progress itself. Uh, so you see, that's the paradox uh, of modernity, according to Bakimo. Uh, if what is valuable is the new, uh, the very notion 
of uh, an end game in history disappears. So this situation, paradoxically, is also, according to Vattimo, a positive opportunity insofar as it enables us to distance ourselves from this mechanism of modernity. Vattimo identifies this positive direction with a notion he takes from Heidegger, which is the notion of Verbindung. What is Verbindung uh, in, in Heidegger? Very briefly, perhaps uh, oversimplifying things a little bit, Verbindung is a transcendence that neither avoids nor leaves behind what is surpassed, but rather embraces, distorts, and transcends it. In the end of modernity, uh, we find a significant passage that connects the concept of secularization with that of emancipation, which initiates a philosophical trajectory that uh, will become central in Vattimo's uh, subsequent works. Vattimo writes, and I quote, the history as we remember it, as the structure or Verbindung as distortion. This might appear as a generalization, but it ceases to do to be so, Fatima continues, if we translate Verbindung with a more with a, with a term that is much more familiar to uh, to us uh, modern, to as inhabitants of the Western civilization. That is the term secularization. For thinkers such as Max Weber and René Girard, the term secularization, which um, I want to stress Vattimo equates with the Heideggerian term of Verbindung, describes, and I quote, a course of events in which emancipation is reached only by means of a radical transformation and distortion of its very content. Therefore, we find in this text, the end of modernity, all the, the growing elements that will then take shape in Vatimo's subsequent reflections on secularization and kenosis. Uh, these elements are history unfolding by interpreting itself, secularization as self-emptying, and emancipation in a triple sense, philosophical emancipation, political emancipation, and religious emancipation. I will try to unpack these notions, uh, although briefly, uh, in, in the rest of my talk. So secularization is defined as the consumption of the sacred, and therefore as a legitimizing aspect of a weak ontology. In this definition, one can already distinguish the significant influence exerted on Vattimo by the work of another important contemporary theorist, René Girard. As Vattimo himself reflects retrospectively on this process in his autobio autobiography, he writes, it is Girard who re-Christianized me in my own way. It is with him that I began to think that it might be possible to bind weakening, secularization, and Christianity closely together." End of quote. The text that in my view signifies the care, the turning point in Vattimo's philosophical trajectory is an essay, a short essay that is not particularly well known even among uh, Vattimo scholars, uh, an essay from 1992 titled History of Salvation, comma, History of Interpretation. This essay underscores Vattimo's exploration of the interplay between salvation and interpretation, reflecting a significant shift in his philosophical outlook. In this text, one can discern the influence 
of his reading of René Girard's work, even though Girard is never mentioned explicitly in this essay. Vattimo reinterprets the history of interpretation from a Christian perspective. He reads the history of interpretation from a Christian perspective, and he states that, and I quote, I think this is a beautiful quote, the history of salvation makes the history of interpretation, but at the same time, the history of salvation only occurs or exists as the history of interpretation. End of quote. Of course, just as not every interpretation is valid, so not every secularization is necessarily good and positive. Vatimo writes, it must be valid for a community of interpreters, which means that the only limit of secularization is love or caritas. Vatimo often uses the Latin uh, word for, for love, which uh, translates the Greek agape, the, 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 the kind of spiritual love that we find in, uh, in the gospel. Uh, sometimes it is translated into English as charity, but obviously we need to be very careful by what uh, we mean by that. So charity in the sense of the Latin caritas. In line with a philosophical tradition that dates back to Kant's work, uh, religion within the boundaries of mere reason, Christ is considered the archetype of this love. Uh, Vatimo writes, as a salvific and hermeneutic event, the incarnation of Jesus, the kenosis, the self-emptying of God, is first and foremost, an archetypical fact of secularization." End of quote. Nevertheless, salvation still awaits further fulfillment. And the paraclete, the spirit of truth, of which the Gospel of John, uh, according to John, talks about, receives which is the spirit received by the faithful, that by the faithful at Pentecost, is, Vatimo writes, precisely tasked with assisting them in this further hermeneutical endeavor. Secularization, simultaneously, represents, I'm quoting a lot, but uh, obviously uh, Vatimo's words are much better than mine uh, to present his own work, uh, Secularization represents, I quote, the weakening of the sense of reality that occurs in the sciences, as well as the historical completion of caritas. So in short, Battimo reinterprets Christianity through a hermeneutical lens. This hermeneutization of Christianity, so to speak, this process of turning Christianity hermeneutical aims to elucidate its most intrinsic essence by placing kenosis at the center of the discourse. This process reaches its culmination and we might say systematization, even though this term might only partially apply to a thinker like Vattimo, who in inherently resists any totalizing systematization, uh, but the culmination of this discourse is in one of his most famous books, although it's a very short book, and I strongly recommend uh, the reading of this book to, any, uh, to anyone, uh, which is a 1996 book, which is translated into English as a belief. So the title is in English is belief. But I have to say that I'm not particularly happy with the translation of this title. The title, the original Italian title of the book is Credere di Credere, uh, which can be translated more accurately in, into English as I believe that I believe. 
something like that. Belief, I'm going to use the, the English title to make things simple. Belief is marked by this identification of secularization with the history of Christianity, which stems from the connection between the history of salvation and the history of, of interpretation that Bassimo had already delineated in his 1992 essays. There is no contradiction, Bassimo argues, between the return of a non-metaphysical religion and Max Weber's interpretation of secularization as a desacralizing interpretation of the biblical message. The two things are actually the same thing for Bassimo. Secularization is the process of the demythization of Christianity. What, remain, what remains after this process is precisely the notion of caritas. In this sense, secularization is the constitutive trait of an authentic religious experience, Fatima writes. And also, as well as, I keep quoting, a positive effect of Jesus' teaching. However, the notion of secularization, which now emerges as a realization of authentic Christianity, does not lose its Verbindung characteristic for Vassimo. It remains an internal transformation and distortion that leads to emancipation from metaphysics, so philosophical emancipation. Modern atheistic rationalism, Vassimo argues, tends to assume two forms. And I quote, belief in the exclusive truth of experimental science in nature and faith in the development of history toward a condition of full, full human emancipation from all transcendent authority. In Batimo's view, Heidegger provides a third alternative, according to which the social transformation that seem to threaten modern sub subjectivity are actually possible chances of emancipation from metaphysics. This emancipation consists in recognizing that being is event. And this enables to enter actively into history. I'm quoting again here, enter actively into history instead of passively contemplating its necessary laws." End of quote. So as you can see, secularization for Vassimo also holds profound political implications. In this sense, secularization can be taken as the preeminent case of the more general process of weakening, the weakening of truth, of dogmatic truth. Vattimo, however, remarks that the term secularization remains central, so it cannot simply be considered as a synonym of weakening. Why? Because, Vattimo argues, secularization, the term secularization, underlines the religious sense of this process. The identification of secularization as the sense of the history of salvation is not for Vatimo a metaphysical statement, but I quote, it appears the most reasonable and the strongest precisely from our point of view in late modernity. Secularization is the very essence of Christianity and an indefinite, indefinite drift limited only by the principle of charity. Or again, in other words, that's another quote from the leaf, the way in which kenosis, having begun with the incarnation of Christ, continues to realize itself more and more clearly by furthering the education of mankind concerning the overcoming of originary violent essence of the sacred into social life itself. End of quote. The notion of Kenosis in Batimov's thought 
should be considered in relation to these concepts of secularization. In the 1980s, Battimo began to see parallels between the Christian notion of kenosis and philosophical nihilism, thanks to the reading of René Girard's book, Things Hidden Since the Foundation of the World, with a book that uh, groundbreakingly maintains and scandalously maintains, perhaps, that Christ's sacrifice is not the satisfaction of God's need for justice in regard to Adam's sin, but it's the unmasking of the violence of sacrificial religion. Battimo embraces Girard's lesson. He writes, and I quote, uh, another beautiful quote in my view, if the natural sacred is that violent mechanism that Jesus came to unveil and refute, it is quite possible that secularization is precisely a positive effect of Jesus' teaching and not a way of moving away from it. It might be that Voltaire himself is a positive effect of the Christianization of mankind and not a blasphemous enemy of Christ. End of quote. However, Battimo goes beyond Girard's perspective on the death of Christ uh, as the demystification of the violence of sacrificial religion, emphasizing the connection between kenosis and nihilism. This emphasis is made explicit in another book by Vattimo, Beyond Interpretation, published in 1994, as well as in the already cited Belief, uh, published in 1996, where Vattimo, in both books, uh, interprets the notion of incarnation in terms of a kenotic sacrifice. Kenotic sacrifice is caritas, charity, considered in the light of kenosis. That is, it is the abandonment or relinquishment for the sake of the other. But it's an act that also has a, an epistemological value. Insofar as the openness to the viewpoint of the other is the premise of a genuine hermeneutic experience. Kenotic sacrifice also expresses the dissolution or the weakening of all strong structures, the structures of metaphysics. In this sense, and I quote again, there is a sacrificial kenotic spirit in Heidegger, in the Heidegger, Bassimo says, in that kind of Heidegger, who aims at the overcoming of metaphysics. For Battimo, the kenotic moment for both Girard and Heidegger resides in the self-exhaustion of metaphysical and religious violence. What seems to be missing in Girard's theory, according to Battimo, and one can legitimately add in Heidegger's perspective as well, is the notion of grace salvation intrinsically linked to the incarnation of Jesus Christ. In other words, Vattimo's perspective differs from Girard's in the sense that for Vattimo, salvation is not primarily a matter of a conscious choice, the choice between sacrificial violence and love. Rather, it's a gradual, chaotic reduction of the violence of the sacred. Secularization understood as weakening, therefore emerges as a fuller realization of the truth of Christianity, which is, and I quote, kenosis, the lowering of God, the denial of the natural traits of divinity, end of quote. Kenosis, therefore, serves as the model for caritas, love, and openness to the other. The intertwining of secularization, emancipation, and weakening with kenosis at, at its core as a model finds its culmination in belief, as I said, maintains a prominent role throughout Vatimo's subsequent philosophical exploration, and becomes particularly significant in, another, in a later book, After Christianity, published in 2002. 
Here, the identification of the notion of emancipation understood as the weakening of metaphysical structures with kenosis is even more emphatic. A philosophical genealogy is traced by Vassimo back to its or origins in the thoughts of Hegel and Diltai. However, it is important to recall that emancipation is achieved through that transformation and distortion, Verbindung, that is secularization. And that secularization in its broadest sense, and I quote, comprises all the forms of dissolution of the sacred. And it is the paradoxical realization of being's religious vocation. However, given that secularization is the way in which the weakening of being is realized, namely, uh, Vassimo says, the kenosis of God, which is the core of the history of salvation, it follows, once again, that secularization is not the abandonment of Christianity, but its fullest realization. Starting from here in After Christianity, Vassimo traces the implications of the idea of secularization as a constitutive aspect of the history of being and therefore of the history of salvation for our way of living the return of religion. The main consequence is that if one accepts Girard's assertion that the free sacrifice of Jesus is not inspired by, by the victim-based logic, then one must, and I quote again, take seriously the idea that it demands to be understood as kenotic salvation, end of quote. As mentioned earlier, the centrality of kenosis is both ethical and epistemological. Traditionally, the epistemic ideal of philosophy has been equated with the God's eye view, a metaphor that notably stripped of religious connotations is still used in contemporary analytic metaphysics. A Spinozian sense of truth, then that in Vassimo's own words, ends up identifying the blessed life with the perfect knowledge of geometry. Vattimo rhetorically and ironically asked whether it was for this purpose that Christ incarnated and sacrificed himself on the cross. For the perfect knowledge of geometry, the implicit answer to this question is indeed negative. Vattimo fundamentally regards Christ's incarnation as an act of liberation, even in the sense of emancipating philosophy, emancipating philosophy from metaphysics. In other words, truth and gospel charity and caritas cannot be held apart. Consequently, truth assumes the form of an agreement among interpreters. It is primarily because of this conception, this conception of truth that Vassimo ended up characterizing himself in his late writings and also in that interview uh, that uh, Milad was mentioning in his introduction, uh, the Vatimo uh, characterized himself as a watered down Hegelian. In this sense, emancipation actually consists in, pers in pursuing secularization, conceived as the process of desacralization, which is also the transformation from the natural to the spiritual, which was addressed by Hegel. Emancipation lies, and I quote, in taking secularization farther in the sense of grasping better and better the spiritual sense of scriptures. Emancipation, therefore, acquires a meaning that is simultaneously epistemological, eti ethical, and political. It is, and I quote again, the realm within which freedom is effectively possible. As such, emancipation means openness, transformation, and projected interpretation instead of what already is. End of quote. This is, therefore, the task of hermeneutics uh, as a philosophy of praxis, 
a philosophy of kenotic practice centered on sacrifice as subtraction, withdrawal, free negation. Like Bassimo says, when Christ speaks of gaining one's soul by losing it, it's a preferential choice for the nothings and nobodies, the least of these. Uh, and here the, the references are uh, again to, to the first letter to the Corinthians 1 28, uh, the Gospel of Matthew 25 40. Uh, Bassimo knows uh, the Gospels pretty well, and, uh, and therefore he, can may, he often makes references. Uh, uh, to, to these verses of the, of the gospel. The increasing attention that Bassimo has devoted to these themes uh, uh, in the last 20 years, uh, the interplay of nihilism, overcoming of metaphysics, emancipation, projection of violence, sacredness, secularization, and kenosis, has not gone unnoticed, drawing analysis and attempts at further development. Um, a potentially problematic issue, extensively discussed by Bassimo's critics, concerns how the notion of kenosis in Bassimo's thought should be understood. Uh, I don't want to uh, bother you too much with a literature review. So, for instance, I will simply mention the fact that for one critic, Shigitano, kenotic sacrifice is for Bassimo an event in the history of the withdrawal of being, and that for another critic, Guarino, Vatimo's notion of kenosis uh, uh, is best, of kenotic sacrifice, better, is best conceived not as an, an, as an actual historical event, but as a metaphor or a theological cipher. Uh, as a matter of fact, Vatimo warns against the danger of turning kenosis into a kind of metaphysical theology. Uh, in my uh, 2014 book, Sacrifice in the Post-Kantian Tradition, that Milad was so kind to mention in the introduction, I argue that post-Kantian philosophy from its inception up to its contemporary hermeneutic development is fundamentally characterized by a kenotic approach. As a hermeneutical thinker, Vassimo he was, sorry, I still talk about him uh, in the present. Vassimo was the heir to a long tradition that, as demonstrated by his mentor, Luigi Parison, traces its truth back to German idealism. Therefore, Vassimo's emphasis on kenosis can be seen as a direct consequence and rediscovery of the fundamental kenotic character of that tradition. For Vassimo, hermeneutics is the philosophical practice that promotes a perspectival view modeled on kenosis. Uh, Vassimo was so kind uh, as to review my, my book, Sacrificing the Post-Kantian Tradition, and re in reviewing my book, Vassimo concurred that the idea of kenotic sacrifice is not only functional in providing a coherent and productive point of view on contemporary thought, but also an indication of what is alive, he wrote, in the philosophy of today, namely the two elements I was trying to identify, to identify as constitutive of the Kantian legacy. So perspectivist epistemology on one end, and kenotic ethics on the other. In uh, addition to what Bassimo's words and as a conclusion, I feel the need to provide one clarification and, and suggest a potential direction for further development. Bassimo identifies perspectivist epistemology as one of the two elements that are vibrant in today's philosophy. And Bassimo has sometimes been accused of being a relativist. However, Bassimo has never claimed that all interpretations are equally valid. In a dialogue with Girard on the topic of relativism, Bassimo stated, and I quote, we don't say that we reach agreement once we have found the truth. 
but that we have found the truth when we have reached agreement. It is still possible to speak of truth, but only because we have realized caritas through agreement. In the realm of opinions, in the realm of value choices, caritas becomes the truth when it is shared." End of quote. So you see, for Vassimo, caritas takes the place of truth. For Vassimo, hermeneutic perspectivism, before holding an epistemological value, carries an ethical significance. This implies that I must contextualize my point of view to consider the perspectives of others. If no one has access to objective truth, then I must necessarily listen to the opinions of others. For Vatimo, the only formative source is caritas, which is based on mutual recognition and is chosen in the name of the primacy of ethics. In light of this priority of the practical over the theoretical, it becomes clearer why Vattimo is reluctant to provide a clear and conceptual definition of kenosis, as mentioned earlier. On the other hand, contemporary philosophical hermeneutics has often emphasized the symbolic aspect of sacrifice. Think of Paul Ricoeur, for example, while tending to neglect its conceptual, normative, and regulative aspect. This has occurred due to a weakening, typical of modernity, of the very notion of normativity. The Spinozian truth mentioned by Vattimo aligns in traditional metaphysics with the source of normativity, and its weakening has ultimately deprived symbols of their normative and regulatory aspects. This underlies the, the pervasive misunderstanding of sacrifice in contemporary culture. It is difficult to deal with a symbol that seems to have, seems to have no other meaning than being a symbol, a sacrifice stripped of any conceptual referent. To what extent can kenosis be philosophically considered without turning it into an empty symbol, an abstract reconstruction, or even a fiction? Perhaps the answer lies precisely in that notion of Verbindung, which is all but abstract, I contend. Instead of regarding the concept with suspicion, the concept in general, I mean, contemporary hermeneutics could subject the concept to a process of distortion and transcendence. To do so, it must return to its origin, to 19th century post-Kantian thought, the relationship between symbols and concepts in connection with the issue of normativity is a theme that reappears constantly after Kant following the weakening of the very notion of truth as a source of normativity. It plays a prominent role in Hegelian idealism. As mentioned, Vassimo defines himself as a watered down Hegelian, and one might even wonder whether this self-definition is all the more accurate, the more the role of symbols in Hegelian philosophy is considered. After all, one of the reasons why Hegel defines Christianity as the consummate religion is the centrality of the incarnation. It is the recognition of our constitutive finitude that in modernity leads to the crisis of metaphysical normativity and subsequently to skepticism and relativism. However, in Christianity, since God himself is affected by finitude, which is the proper sense of kenosis as the self-emptying of the divine logos introduced by St. Paul in the letter to the Philippians, Christian symbolism allows for the expression of a philosophy that undermines the normative foundations upon which relativism is itself is based. Hence, a genuinely post-metaphysical perspectivist philosophy that accomplishes Father Verbindung by reclaiming kenosis, not only symbolically, 
but also conceptually. I do believe that this is one of the most intriguing prospects that Baptimus' late philosophy has opened. Thank you very much. <laughs>